So earlier today, I sat my fat ass down and I decided I was gonna look for a good movie to watch on Netflix. But like always, what was really gonna go down was I was gonna spend about two hours looking through sorry ass movies just to get to the good ones. Then I was gonna start a few of them that sounded pretty good, watch them for a few minutes, then exit out to keep looking for some more. Then get up and not having ever watched a single damn movie. Tell me you don't do that shit too. <music> Every time I see a movie that sounds pretty good on Netflix, I kind of go on my laptop, open that up, go on the website and check everybody's reviews, you know, how many stars they're giving them, check what their reviews, just to kind of get a good sense to see if people are liking it, to see if I'll probably like it or not. And so because a lot of these movies have like thousands of ratings, thousands of reviews, what I just do is I click on the little review link and kind of scroll down super fast, kind of like if I'm looking at one of those animation flip books and what I kind of see the most is what I'm kind of like, oh, okay, that's the average. I know, very scientific, right? So as I was doing this, I saw that Star Wars The Last Jedi was now on Netflix. Then I remember how lots of fans were pissed at the particular path that Ryan Johnson decided to take The Last Jedi in and so I became curious to see what people were rating The Last Jedi on Netflix. Not good. And by the way, to compare, I checked the ratings for row one. Four star, five star, up and down scrolling, five star, four star, the occasional two star. They were damn good. In contrast for The Last Jedi, one star, one star, one star, one star. The occasional two through three stars sprinkled in there and the very rare four to five stars, but really not good at all. So yeah, man, the Star Wars brand is suffering big time right now. This is not news and it's all kind of due to The Last Jedi and what Ryan Johnson decided to do with it and what the Lucasfilm leadership has kind of done with the fan backlash and kind of blaming them and Solo's flop kind of reaffirms this. And hey, I'll be honest, I had a lot of issues with the last jedi but overall i gave the film a pretty good review but the more i sit on it the more it makes me frustrated the more i kind of don't like it the more i kind of hate it the more it pisses me off like all the other pissed off fans i start to wonder why in the world did ryan johnson choose to go there and why did lucasfilm and kathleen kennedy let him go there and not only that but ryan johnson missed the opportunity to make this movie fucking awesome for example he could have added a bomb ass lightsaber duel between luke and kylo ren but nah he was just a hologram and he died so there goes that and while we're on the subject i'll give you guys my quick take on the whole star wars fandom and where i stand on it i've heard a lot of voices constantly blame like an sjw-esque agenda that the bigwigs have over at lucasfilm and while i've certainly seen the tweets directed at fans from kathleen kennedy ryan johnson and others i haven't looked at the date to conclude that fan backlash over this are responsible for things like solos flopping um, and so my take is that there's a bunch of different variables that have caused solos flopping and that the fan backlash is just one of them but I do think that those fans loudly blaming an agenda whether right or wrong or whether they're a tiny fraction of the fandom or a large chunk of the fandom it's wrong for Kennedy and Johnson to dismiss them and then put them on black and so is it bad business for Lucasfilm to put the fandom like that on blast? I'm not sure because in our current political climate, it's not necessarily so. What do I mean by this? Typically for a business to badmouth the people who consume their product, it is bad business. However, again, in a political climate where most people, including your consumers, are more liberal and thus anti-hate, calling out people that are on the other side of that spectrum can get all the people that who are liberal, the majority of the people at this current state and time and this political political context to come onto your side, consume your product because you agree with them. But the problem is then when you accuse the people that do not like your product as being hateful, racist, and so on. And so my take is that an SJW agenda is not necessarily hurting Star Wars. What I think is hurting is what Ryan Johnson did to The Last Jedi, where he took the story. Now, did he take it there to fit an SJW agenda? It's possible, but I don't have an inside source, so I don't know. According to some of the statements by the Lucasfilm leadership, it might be, but I can't sit here and tell you that for sure this is the way it is. Man, this is a crazy rabbit hole and I feel like I'm getting sucked into it right now. But yeah guys, in the end what I'm trying to say is terrible ratings for The Last Jedi on Netflix. Yes, 
it's Star Wars. Yes, this movie has tons of cool stuff in it. Cool space battles, an awesome lightsaber duel, but it also has a ton of annoying things in it. And it overall pissed the fandom off, and for the most part, I agree with that. And yes, I know I have a The Last Jedi poster right behind my wall here. I think it's a cool poster. Sue me. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. Make sure you hit the like button. And hey, if you're Walking Dead, comic book genre, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, and all around film loving geek, then you gotta subscribe. And also, make sure you check out more of my videos right now. Peace out.